All right, what's going on you guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to downgrade your old Apple product all the way back down to iOS 6 and pretty much relive those old 2012 memories. Now this process is only exclusive to 32-bit devices, so this will only work on things like the iPod Touch 5th generation or an iPhone 5 and a couple of their devices as well. I'll have them linked down below in the description box below if you guys wanna see if your device will be able to be downgraded. And by the way, this is kinda of like a dual booted downgrade. So you'll be running two versions of iOS at the same time, but you'll be able to make it untethered. So every time you restart the device, it'll boot right into iOS 6. So let's get right into this video. So the first process, of course, is gonna be taking a backup of all of your information because the last thing we want is for something to go wrong and for you to have to restore this device. So go ahead and take a backup if there's anything really important on this device that you don't want to risk losing. And the first official step is going to be to actually jailbreak this product. So in this case, I have the iPod Touch fifth generation and I basically installed the Phoenix jailbreak on iOS 9.3.5. So you don't really have to be on iOS 9, you can be on any iOS version that uh, the iPod is on. But if you are on the latest version, then Phoenix will be the jailbreak that belongs to your device. And if you're not sure which jailbreak belongs to your specific device, you can search it up on Google and you should be able to find that. Um, but in this case, we're going to be using a software known as Sideloadly. I think that's how you say it. And you can basically use this to sideload an application onto your iPod Touch. And by the way, when you guys are using Sideloadly, you'll need to use an Apple ID in order to actually sideload the application. So in this case, I'm using a completely different Apple ID that's like not even associated with this iPod Touch at all. So you can use whichever Apple ID that you want. Sometimes an Apple ID may not work. So just try different ones if you have them until one of them eventually works and for me it just ended up being one that i haven't used in like years so yeah play around with that because sometimes the software isn't always going to work so once we are jailbroken we want to go ahead and open up Cydia and we want to download falza and once falza is officially downloaded we're going to go to this directory and that is going to be system library and core services and basically what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be tricking the ipod into thinking that it's running ios 6 and the reason why is because we need to trick the ipod into thinking it's running ios 6 so that we can downgrade to ios 8. i'll basically explain this in a bit but basically what we want to do is we want to change the product version from uh, 9.3.5 to 6.1.3 and we also want to change the product build version to whichever version is associated with that 6.1.3. So you can actually find that out through a website known as IPSW. So as you guys can see, I searched up the iPod Touch, I searched up fifth generation, and then I searched up iOS 6.1.3, and then I basically copied and pasted the build number and I put it into Falza. So once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and exit out of Falza. Just make sure you guys click done and save and go ahead and restart your Apple product. Okay, so once we are officially restarted, we want to go into the settings app and we want to click on general and then software update. And then in here, we should see an update for iOS 8.4.1. And you guys might be wondering, well, why are we updating or downgrading to iOS 8? And the reason why is because iOS 8 has an untethered jailbreak. And that's going to be really important for us when achieving that untethered experience for iOS 6 because we want to make sure that every time we restart this device, it boots right into iOS 6. So go ahead and install that iOS 8.4.1. It's going to take like a couple minutes. It might even take up to like 30 minutes. It's a really slow download. I think it's downloading from like the slowest possible servers at Apple. So yeah, just give it some time. It'll take like a few moments. And uh, once it is done, then go ahead and install that iOS 8.4.1. And for whichever reason, if you can get the install thing to work or if you can get it to actually install the software, try restarting the iPod or try going into settings and clicking on reset and then clicking reset all settings. This will require you to enter in your Wi-Fi password once again, um, but this should fix the issue if the installation is not working. But once we are officially into iOS 8, go ahead and sign up as usual. You might be asked to like unlock your Apple ID because of activation lock. So go ahead and do that. And once you guys are on the home screen, we wanna go back into settings once again. And this is gonna be super important. So we are running an iOS 8 version right now, but this is a really glitchy version of iOS 8. So we wanna go into general, reset, and we wanna go into erase all content and settings. This is gonna be super important because if we don't do this, then the entire process is literally gonna fail. So go ahead and do that right now. And it's basically gonna make you go through the entire setup process all over again. So once you do that, make sure you guys um, enter in like your Wi-Fi and everything. You don't have to log into an Apple ID, but you guys can if you want to. Um, so I pretty much just blazed through the entire setup screen. But once we are officially onto the iOS 8 home screen, 
this is where we can finally go to step three and that's gonna be very similar to the first step but we're actually gonna be jailbreaking iOS 8 now. So the jailbreak for iOS 8.4.1 is gonna be called ETA Sun. I'll have it linked down below, but it's the same exact process. Use side loadly to load it onto your iPod or your iPhone or whichever Apple product that you're using and go ahead and install that jailbreak. So once we are jailbroken and we see Cydia, we wanna go ahead and add the repo coolbooter.com and within Coolbooter, once we do have that added, we wanna install the Coolbooter tweak. And this is gonna be the tweak that's gonna be used to downgrade to iOS 6.1.3 or whichever iOS version you wanna to downgrade to. And once you are within Coolbooter, uh, make sure you guys actually click the downgrade button and make sure you guys install the second most recent version like I did here. And that's because the most recent version has a lot of issues it causes the Apple product to basically boot loop every time you try to boot into the other uh, OS. And I'm not sure why that happens, but yeah, just make sure you guys install the second most recent um, tweak of Coolbooter uh, onto your device. So once we do have Coolbooter all opened up, go ahead and go through the entire process. It's pretty simple. We do have to partition and let Coolbooter know how much storage we want to partition onto the second iOS. So in this case, I did like 18 gigabytes. And uh, yeah, this thing is like 32 gigs. So the more gigabytes you have, the better. Uh, because you'll basically have more storage on your iOS 6 partition. Uh, but you can basically say no to like the verbose boot and all that stuff. I did say yes to jailbreak because um, I do want to install some apps on this device later on, but you guys can say no to that if you want. But I do recommend saying yes because uh, yeah, it's just going to be a lot more simpler. You can install a lot of different tweaks and stuff like that. And the process for installing iOS 6 should take like another 20 minutes. It's actually a lot more quicker than it did to downgrade to iOS 8. And eventually the software is gonna ask you to restart the device and it's gonna restart back into iOS 8 again. And once you're on the home screen of iOS 8, we wanna open up Cool Booter again and we wanna click on the button that says boot. And if all goes as planned, then you guys should eventually see the iOS 6 boot up screen and you'll notice the iOS 6 one because the Apple logo has that little cutout in the middle. And yeah, you're pretty much in iOS 6 now and this is pretty interesting stuff. So all you have to do now really is just go through the entire setup process. It's pretty straightforward. But as you guys can see, the home screen is here. We're, we're pretty much back in 2012 now. So this is pretty cool to see. Now I did mention that this is gonna be an untethered dual boot version. So in order to actually make this untethered, all we have to do is go ahead and restart the Apple device and boot, uh, boot it as we normally would. And it should boot back into iOS 8. And we wanna go back into Cydia and we wanna go back into the original uh, repo that we downloaded for Coolbooter. And all you guys have to do now is to pretty much just download the Coolbooter untethered tweak. And this is gonna allow us to basically boot right into iOS 6 every time the device dies. So it's gonna be super convenient. And it kind of gives you that feeling that it is a fully untethered experience, but it is dual booted. So keep that in mind. And if you guys do wanna boot back into iOS 8, all you have to do is hold the volume down, the power button, and you'll soon see the normal Apple logo up here. We'll take a few moments, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say most people are probably just gonna stay on iOS 6 uh, because it's just such a good software. Um, so yeah, once you guys are on iOS 6, you guys can pretty much do whatever you guys want. It's a nice software to play with. If you guys have some old apps you guys wanna install, you guys can definitely go ahead and do that. Now there is one tweak that I highly recommend that you guys install, and that is known as the Checkmate Store tweak. This is gonna basically allow you to download apps through the App Store um, through your old purchase history it is under the inboxy play games repo i'll have it linked down below in the description box if you guys are interested in checking that out um, but it basically allows you to download apps like facebook instagram twitter basically any app that was once supported on ios 6 can be downloaded onto this ipod touch or iphone 5 which uh, whichever device that you guys are planning on using. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot more simpler than my last one. If for any reason one of the steps don't work or you guys are having trouble trying to downgrade, be sure to comment down below. I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys on my next one.